live from New York. It's Werb Electronics with Becky Stern. Hello. Welcome, everyone. It's, um, what is today, March 11th? March 11th. We're here with some glorious natural sunlight. Today with me, as always, is Phil, Mr. Lady Ada himself. Hello. He's going to tell us what's on today's show. On today's show, we have a lot of exciting things. Gold is best. We have <laughs> uh, Werb <Wearful> Wednesday. <laughs> we talk about the latest yep. news. Sorry. That's no, cool. It's cool. Rebel Wednesday's best. Best, <laughs> best, best, best. Best segment. <laughs> okay. Um, then we have component of the week. That's right. Today we're talking about the new Gemma 2. Tools we love. This is the Type A machine, Series 1, 3D printer. All right. And questions and answers. You have questions out there. Becky has answers. You Most of the them. answers are in the book, but you can get, you can win the book by asking a question. Oh, okay. So all of your answers, so you ask a question, you will receive answers. If you have a question about wearable electronics, you can post it up now or later in the comments here on Twitter, on Google Plus, or on the uh, Adafruit blog, okay. and we will queue them up for a future episode and enter you to win the giveaway. So today's questions are already in this hat. Okay. And all the right. prize is the Flora book. All that and more on Wearable Electronics Becky Stern. Dun, 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 dun. It's the best. Gold, okay. is, gold is best. Yeah. Phil, why is gold best? I guess we'll start, we'll, yeah, we can, we can start with a little bit of Wearable Wednesday. Yeah. I have a little bit of a segment this yeah. week. Yeah. Um, but before I do that, we should pay some bills. Oh, sure. Okay. If you wouldn't like to build your own gold is best wearable <laughs> electronics, you can use code Gemma on yeah. checkout to receive 10% off your order. Um, yeah. It's everything but gift certificates and EagleCAD software. Okay. Yeah, don't forget, um, save a buck or two. All right, so it's it's Wearable Wednesday day, and on the blog we have a whole big collection of stuff. And I heard that you used to do a segment on Engadget that was very apropos for what we're about to talk about, it was, Phil. It was called Watch This Wednesday. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Phil has like one trick. It's a good trick. Though. Phil likes watches. Yeah. So, I, well, I don't. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I actually think um, wearable uh, computer watches are pretty much bad. Um, no one's going to do anything that's good for everyone. Um, uh, Except for like me, and if I'm your target market, like someone who helps runs an electronics company, who wrote for Engadget, who started like you, you get know, start to get feature creep well, if you try to solve, you know, if, satisfy if, a customer if like the you. Target market is just like, oh, you know, I really want to have a hashtag show up on my watch. Like, okay, not many people want that. I would like that. Yeah. Hashtag. So, yeah, hashtag yeah, biggest turn. Very small group of people, but I collect these, and I used to call this Watch This Wednesday. So on um, on our blog, we have um, a couple of just things that came up this week, um, it is time for the Apple Watch. It's this time. It's time, everybody. Yeah. And uh, before the show, I was showing Becky one of my favorite uh, commercial, uh, parody commercials. Uh, if you search online for gold is best. Gold is best. And it, it was when the iPhone first started having the gold colors because uh, the iPhone turned into a fashion accessory. Right. And as Apple goes into the watch market, um, that's already a fashion accessory. Yes. And there's also a lot of technology that goes along with it. So if you watch it, it's funny because it's like it's all it's like gold is best, boom boom. And so it's this guy Rafi. But when you watch it, it's really funny. It's a spoof on an Apple commercial. Yeah. It's really good. And so um, as wearable electronics with Vicky Stern continues to cover um, Apple's efforts, um, we'll have one. You know, there'll be teardowns and everything. We probably don't have to worry about that. I fix it probably is camping. I think out. I fix it. I mean, like we yeah. try not to overlap our teardowns with I fix it, and like when we do, it it works out. Like they did, also yeah. did the Moto 360, and like we were able to. I couldn't get like the screen apart, so I could yeah. like reference their teardown. Yeah. But like they're gonna, their, they do a jam. great job on things with glued together touch screens yeah. like phones, and that's what the the Apple Watch is like too. So we'll yeah. probably let I fix it tear it down because we know you guys are gonna do a good job. Yeah. Um, but like. You're gonna wear it because you're an iPhone guy, and and I'm gonna watch yeah, you gonna watch you wear it. Get it? Watch. Watch for stuff. And ask you questions about it, and you're gonna and tell me how you feel yeah, about the interface. Yeah, and we're gonna um, probably port one of our iOS apps to it. Um, sure. And so, anyways, um, right now, until we get our hands on it, like it's interesting the keynotes and all that. Until we get our hands on it, I don't have a lot to say. I think that Apple will probably do a better job with the ecosystem of devices because mm -hmm. there's not as much fragmentation. Like Sony had an Android watch, and Motorola has an Android watch, Google sure. has Sure, they'll get like less bogged down in, the, de in the, the differences between the different platforms, and, the, and they the can hardware. have like a singular focus on, yeah. on and like th that's always been Apple's jam, so they have a lot more control because they have a, a, a lot uh, fewer yeah. products to work over. But um, let us know what you're excited to build. Like I want to know if we can, you know, do Blue Fruit stuff, or you can yeah, push, we will. You, push we will you know, your Adafruit.io project, like, you will. reminds you to, um, yeah. like, 
fill up your cat's water on your Apple Watch. Here's a good example. With Adafruit.io, you can have something set up that if there's water in your basement, it would one, keep track of how much, and two, it will alert you, and your Apple Watch would let you know. But you could also do that on your phone and a variety of other things. Anyways. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. What kind of DIY electronics projects would you make with a smartwatch? Gold projects. Gold, Gold is, is best. best. Okay. <laughs> Gold's the thing today. All right, wherever Wednesday, what do we got this week back? Some cool things. Leslie posted up this um, this Turkish, uh, ancient Turkish garb that in museums they're using like for for incomplete sets of this of this Bashkir uh, Turkish attire. They're uh, 3D scanning pieces they do have, and then 3D printing replicas, and then painting them gold because gold is best. Oh man! And, um, <laughs> this is the theme today. <laughs> and, uh, it should have been the code. Oh, it's okay. The code is Gemma. We have a theme. Um, and then, um, like, so that they can reimagine these pieces without like meticulously handcrafting mm. um, replicas. So uh, I think that's really cool for museum museums to be able to sort of fill in the gaps in in ancient um, okay. costume and apparel and jewelry, and then. Um, Use 3D printing to like make it so that like oh then you could make a complete copy and another museum could have a piece. And Heir heirloom 3D printing. Yeah, so that's cool. Read Leslie's article about that. And by the way, every every week, if you want to see what's cool cool happening around the the land, yeah. you can check out the Adafruit blog wearables category. I only share a couple of the posts here yeah. every week, um, but lots of people contribute and there's lots of fun projects. Special shout out to Leslie who's in the chat room. Hello, Leslie. Oh, Leslie's visiting on Friday. Yeah. And um, okay. this What's is Christopher and Ariel. They're, well, they went to a Pittsburgh networking event together. I recognize this tiara, so I think this is the Christopher who created this tiara for their daughter. Mm. And I could have a very, like, there's a, because I'm, uh, they're in my uh, open source hardware summit talk. Okay. That's why I recognize this, this particular laser cut uh, tiara made with the 60 NeoPixel ring. Yeah. But um, Christopher and Ariel, they changed the, the colors to go along with the theme of this networking event they were going to, and they said that. Um, it was a big hit, okay. the, the, the tiara and the um, pocket okay. square. So keep up the good work, guys. Looking sharp. These are happy people. Yeah. Next up, this is like a video-like thing. This is probably one of those Doctor Who-like things. It is. That's that's our 3D printed um, TARDIS, and then it's it's um, Internet of TARDIS. So it's it's like a help beacon. So it's. Um, this is what, remember I said I was forgetting something? I was forgetting to write down what the technology is that they have inside the TARDIS oh, that's okay. receiving the, um, it's not a Spark Core, maybe it is, I can't remember. C3000, it could be a Spark Core, it could be an XB. It it's lots of stuff. could be read the, fruit. Go to the blog and read the post because I, for, I, I forgot to put it on my sticky. That's your Sorry, trick, guys. you're like, you're like, if you want more, you have to go to the blog. No, I don't play Ooh. the ditzy girl card. When I forget something, no, it's no. legit. No, I'm saying you're playing the strategic <laughs> page view card. But I wouldn't, if that were the case, I wouldn't like blame it on me for getting something. I would just, I would no, just. No, but that's a trick because you're, you, you, it's a double, it's a secret trick. It's reverse psychology. Sure. It's reverse, reverse. It's reverse, reverse psychology. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not. It's just regular, please go to the blog because I'm sorry that to the creator of this project that I forgot wow. to write down how you built your project. But it's cool. You um, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to um, 3D print your own TARDIS, we have those 3D files on um, the learning system and Thingiverse and okay. one, two, three d So, that's that's cool. Upgrade, open source upgrade, to the to the TARDIS project. Books, and then here's my self-aggrandizing moment of the day. Books, books, These books. are all of the books that books. were sent out by the publicist and my friends who have received the books. That's John Park. That's John Park. My friends who have received my book and then tweeted about it. Um, that's that's from Katya Vega. <laughs> Katya Vega is up in the corner. In that's our book in Rio, Rio? de Janeiro. Okay. Um, up here is my friend Haley in Brooklyn. She's a craft writer. <laughs> There's John Park in California. If you don't know who he is, right then now. then then I can't help you. Yeah. Host of Maker TV back in the way. Yeah, yeah back and in then the over there is Tim Tim Stevens, who's um, a writer at CNET. Okay, got our book. So. Thanks, guys, for posting up pictures of my book. I appreciate that. And number, then there's a couple one, Amazon reviews, too. Number one bestseller in microcontroller books, right? In single board computers, beating out yeah. some Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone new releases. So I'm really, you know, heh <laughs> suck it, Linux. I mean, I love Linux. We're coming after you, Matt Richardson. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. No, me and Matt Richardson, friends forever. I know. I know. It's a book club. Okay, component of the week. Um, of course, use code Gemma to buy some of this stuff. But component of the week, Bex, what is this component that it's you It's the Gemma 2. Ooh. Okay. So you guys asked for it. We are giving it to you. It's an on-off switch on your Gemma. Yeah. To learn more, let us watch the video. Pass Becky, take it away. This is the new improved Gemma 2. Let's go over how it differs from Gemma Classic. The connector is now micro USB, which gives us a little more space on the board. Switching the ATtiny85's chip package from SOIC to QFN also saves a little space. 
With all that room on the board, we've added a handy on-off switch. If you don't have a switch on your battery pack, this is a very convenient upgrade that makes it much easier to build and use your Gemma hoop earrings, 3D printed fire horns, superhero power plant, and NeoPixel ring bangle bracelet, just to name a few. Everything else you love about Gemma is staying the same. It's got the same size board, the same sewable pads, and JST battery connector. You'll also use the same software drivers and Arduino code you're already used to. We hope these minor changes are majorly helpful on your next Gemma project. We've got dozens of tutorials for you to try on the Adafruit Learning System. And if you do, share your projects with us on our weekly show and tell hangout on Google+. Thanks so much for watching, and subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. All right, so that's Gemma 2. What do you guys think? It's good, right? I know there's like there's just a few features, but we really wanted to refine it. And then um, because we're going through the Gemma Arduino uh, collaboration, we also got the board um, FCC and CEC -E 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 yeah. certified. And you know, there's reasons that people say to do it. There's uh, oftentimes you don't need to, but we want to be able to sell this in all places and yeah. in, in everywhere. Um, including like retail environments and sometimes they just require it no matter what and so um, this is something that we're doing a lot so you'll yeah. see this on more and more of our but it's cool to see that on the board so it seems it seems like you know sehr legit yeah I've got it, this tattoo that says FCC right? but okay that's a different show uh, <laughs> what people should concentrate if on. you would like to get one of the new Gemma's I think they might be out of stock right now though you can sign up um, yeah. and be notified when they're back in stock. And you can wait until next Wednesday when there's another code. Or tomorrow yeah. when there's an Ask an Engineer and 3D printing code. There could be. <laughs> All right, tools they love. Um, this is a big deal. We're kind of settling on what we think the maker 3D printer is. Yeah, so like we've tried, we, Noah and Pedro have tried like all the printers. And um, ever yeah. since like they, you know, they stopped supporting the MakerBot RIP2, which was our favorite for a while, was, um, in terms of like the, the bed size and the different kinds of filament you can print and the ease of use of the software tool chain and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we've been trying out, you know, trying to find the, the next printer that's going to do like all of what we want it to do. And like the Orion is cool, but like you can't, it's hard to print flexible material with it because of the drive system. And, and so um, Noe and Pedro have been really hard at work trying out lots of different 3D printers. And I got asked recently, what 3D printer would you recommend for wearable stuff? And, and really the only consideration is, does it print flexible material? Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, Noe and Pedro and all of us, therefore, are liking the um, Type A Series 1 best yeah. these days. And why don't we let Noe and Pedro tell you why? Type A is best. Today we're taking a look at the Type A Machine Series 1. That's right, we've been checking out the Type A Machine for several months and wanted to give you guys a walkthrough of some of the features and our experiences we've had with it so far. So first up, let's take a look at the design. It features an aluminum and acrylic body with a laser cut CNC folded metal chassis. So the overall design is a nice looking machine that looks industrial. This thing is pretty huge. It's got a build volume of 305 millimeters cubed so it can make massive parts. The bed is made out of glass and it's fixed to an aluminum build plate which is also removable. There's four thumb screws on each corner that actually make it really easy to adjust for leveling the bed. And if you take a look at the back, there's a nice giant knob for adjusting the Z height. There's also a nice little graphic to help you know which way to turn the knob when you're leveling the bed, which is actually a really nice user-friendly feature. Yeah, that is. It's also got a Winchester direct drive system that uses 1.75 millimeter with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And you'll notice that the nozzle is actually really thin. That's because it's a slim design that produces really fine details. It only takes about 30 seconds to heat up from zero to 230 C, which is pretty fast. The nozzle itself can reach up to 270 C, so it's gonna work with PET and carbon-based filaments. Those are the really strong ones that require the super hot hot end. And it's also gonna work with TPE material, so it works with Ninja Flex because it's got one of those pinch wheel designs of the extruder. That's right, and we really like the design of the extruder. It features a spring-loaded system for easily loading filament. It has a single piece melt path, so it actually reduces clogging. It's running on a linear guide system that is precision milled, so it has high quality bearings that make the movements really smooth. It also features micro steppers, which you can easily tell just by the way it sounds. So the Series 1 has one of the coolest start G-code scripts we've ever seen. So right before the print starts, the tool moves all the way up, it goes beyond the print bed, and then it starts purging. After that, it moves over to the edge and performs a nozzle wipe. So you know each print's really clean and precise. So that's pretty slick. 
That's right, and most of the electronics are mounted in the bottom enclosure, which you can easily get to. We really like the way the components are laid out. There's an onboard BeagleBone Black running Octoprint, so it has built-in Wi-Fi for wireless monitoring and printing. The stepper motor drivers are right over here, and each driver has a potentiometer that can be adjusted if you ever need to recalibrate for any Z-shifting. You got the power supply over here, so if you ever wanted to upgrade to a heated bed or dual extruders, you can expand it there. There's also USB ports on the front, so you can plug in a camera and even power other devices. So the Type A machine has its own flavor of Cura, which works pretty well. But we tend to use Simplify 3D because it really offers great slicing support material. And of course, it's open source firmware, so it's gonna work with any slicer. Parts have very little Z-wobble and have fine details. Printing at 100 microns works best and produces amazing support structures that's both high quality and easy to remove. So we've been printing some pretty big parts, mostly large props and weapons from our favorite video games and movies. And support material really works remarkably well on parts with heavy overhangs. I think this is a great machine for visual artists, 3D modelers, engineers, and any designer or maker who is looking for a printer that can produce really high quality prints with details. The Type A machine gives this a hacker-friendly warranty, so if you find yourself into some trouble, you got your back. We definitely recommend it for anyone who's looking to invest into a high-quality machine for prototyping. And it's available in the Adafruit shop now, and you can save yourself a discount on Wednesdays and Thursdays with a special coupon code. So let us know what you'd like us to print with the Type A Series 1 machine. And thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more 3D-printed projects and reviews from Adafruit. See you guys next week, and until then, remember to make, share, and repeat. Bye, everybody. I like how they walked off the scene and there's just like a 3D printer slowly printing. Instead of like the explosion mm, in the yep. background. No, it's just like they walk off slow and it's like. It's cool. I like that. I like that video. It's very yeah. beautiful and nice job, guys. Yeah. Um, and we have these in stock. Yeah. So, you know, what's like not, you always say this, not really a good deal for us, but like a really good deal for you guys yeah. would be if you used to. If you, you use, use the code, if you use the code Gemma, not only do you get ten percent off, but you also get free UPS ground in the continental U.S. That's really good, reliable shipping. So if shipping. you want a, a Type A machine, Series One Three printer, you that's might the best be deal. A pretty good deal. It's the best and only deal. Okay. Anyway, that's the one that we recommend for wearables. They're all open source, easy to mod, hack, extend, prints flexible material. No and Pedro love it, so that means that I love it too. Okay. Uh, next up, questions and answers. You've got questions. Becky has answers. We're kicking it off this week and going forward probably forever until getting started with Adafruit Flora Part D is out. This is going to be the prize. Yeah, uh, why not? Because yeah. like this is so much information and it's better yeah. than a single we might Flora reboot board. the series down the road. We might reboot the series. We'll, reboot. well, we'll definitely do a revision to the book when, when we revise Flora, um, which will yeah. happen. And then maybe, I don't really know if you guys want to do a, a Getting Started with Gemma book. So we did a Getting Started with Trinket book, and that's really similar. Yeah. However, it's not geared towards sewable projects. And I also don't know if I want to write a new book soon. Yeah. But I could be persuaded. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with the Arduino Gemma, which is basically the Gemma 2. Um, right. And we'll see what, what happens with that. That's probably going to be the closest. That's true. But thing. if you guys, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't turn down your support for the idea of a getting started with Gemma book in the comments. OK. <laughs> Subscribe and click like. Right, you yeah. OK, this is the first one. Question for Becky. I made a new Pixel Legend of Zelda half for my daughter based on the Terra project. And I used Conductive Fair. It came out great. Thanks. But the first time I did it, uh, the only the first new Pixel lit. Properly, I had to remodel the conductive thread and redo. I went totally old school and used wire soldered connections. Fortunately, I'm a soldering god because I watched Colin's video on the subject based on my multimeter. I, uh, I look like bad volts due to line loss in, in the thread down to 1.8 volts downstream in the string. So here's my question. What's the deal with conductive thread? <laughs> Why is it there's warnings and limits? Did I go too long with the thread or did I abuse it with my soft fork stitching and increase its resistance by manipulating too much Lastly, thanks for what you do. You are good people. Thank you so much. John. Okay, John. Sylvia Nederlander. Okay. Who makes me think you're a, you're a, a Dutch woman named Sylvia, but instead you're a man named John. Okay, so um, you are on to something with your sophomore sewing. I hate to say it, but we get this question a lot with people who are um, like not that, not that experienced at sewing. Um, sewing is hard. It's harder than soldering, a lot harder. And it also takes a lot of practice. So I've been sewing, for instance, since I was five years old. I duplicated my Beanie Baby when I was eight. Um, 
And like stitching takes actual physical practice. It's not just about knowing what the thread is supposed to do. You actually have to get a feel for what's right, what's wrong, yeah. what works, what doesn't. Is it like that 10,000 hour thing? That like, kind once of. Once you have 10,000 yeah. hours, you're an expert. Kind of, that, yeah. Right? So like, but, but I would say there's certain things that are easier to get started like to become competent at than others. And soldering, I think you can get you okay. can get up to practice really quickly. Sewing, you actually need to do several projects before you're going to get better at sewing. And conductive thread is harder to sew than regular thread. So without seeing your circuit, typically what comes up in the forums is folks are like, hey, it's not working, what's up? They post a picture of their conductive thread circuit, and I can see that they're, the stitches around the pads are so loose that they're not making good contact. Um, if you have NeoPixels connected to power but not ground, they can fry if you leave them mm. connected to power and not ground for too long. You won't, anyway, um, yeah, make tighter stitches. Post up some pictures of your circuit in the forums and, and um, drop me a link to the forum post and I'll check it out for sure. Okay. But if you pay attention to my tutorials, you'll notice that the stitches are always very, very tight around the pads. I'll make like extra knots at the back to make sure that they stay tight. And then when you do long, long runs, you wanna make sure that that power and ground is the same thread. You use the one thread that connects to Flora or Gemma and goes all the way down. You don't want it to be broken and then have another piece of thread because this type of connection with the steel thread is a lot less electrically conductive than it being the solid pieces of wire that go all the way through. Okay. Um, I hope that helps, but it's not easy and oh, there was a one more thing I wanted to rant about about this question. Okay. You called the, using the wire old school, and I would like you to not think about it that way. What wire and thread are like good for different things. So if you like, so these are different thread, classes in the same school. Yeah, they're like for different. Oh, they're the hallway. There's okay. Different purposes, right? So like, if you want to make something super flexible, and you and you don't have a soldering iron, and um, it's designed to move and shift in a garment, conductor thread might be the way to go, but like silicone coated stranded wire is great. It's insulated, it's, it can handle lots of current without getting hot and it, you can sew it into place and you don't have short circuits. So like okay. use that, but it's not like old school, new school. It's just like using the right tool for the job. Okay. And like just to prove to you that you can sew long, th long chains of conductor thread, I put in a picture okay. of my we all agree chameleon this is, scarf. This is a school of rock though, right? Okay, good. You, didn't, you missed it. Mike Byers says, why is Prague in here? Oh, yeah, so by the way, when we're done with the show, if you stick around the chat, please turn the lights off on your way out. Uh, <laughs> Becky, I'm thinking about doing a variant of the prank package with the touch-sensitive ribbon. Seems like one of the capacitive touch sensor breaks out along with the right ribbon would be ideal for this. So... Yeah. So... So which breakout yeah. and ribbon? Which... Yeah, which one? Or possibly another way to go would make it play sounds when the ribbon... No, you got it, dude. You got it, dude? Yeah, you like, use the... So there's two different dude. standalone cap, yeah. cap touch. I recommend the momentary. If I made sure to include the, the screenshot with the PID on there, so you can you can find your link later. Okay. Um, so this was the sh the the uh, audio FX board project where you shake the package and it makes plays a sound sample. So it's yeah. like throws you off as to what's inside the box. The cap touch board is a great add on for this. So the momentary cap touch will just set the pin high, which you can ho hook up to the trigger on the. Um, on the soundboard, and you could connect to multiple triggers. Yeah. And um, the ribbon, I w you can use any of our conductive materials. So you could use copper tape, you could use conductor thread, you could use the ribbon, you could use a piece of conductive fabric. Anything that's conductive is gonna get you to that cap touch board. So that's up to you. Check out our materials um, category in the wearables section. Okay. But that sounds like a cool project. Next Share it with uh, us. This is from Richard. I am working on moving fairy wings. How would I drive a servo using Gemma or Trinket? Ah, question. Richard, you would follow Mike Barella's excellent tutorial about controlling a servo with Trinket or Gemma. It is on the Adafruit Learning System. Okay. And if you want to learn more, you can also check out Mike's book, Getting Started with Adafruit Trinket. All right, <laughs> next up, this is from Steve. Hello, first I want to thank you for all the help and advice on my questions I've asked. I'm making my Firewalker shoes for my mascot, and it turned out great. I even used Flora and one, one of the shoes. Thank you. He won a Flora, and he used it in his yeah. project. That's this awesome. That's cool. Um, I did have some problem with the, or like you know, some help with. One of the shoes went out for the first hour. The LEDs went dim, like batteries were going out. Oh, maybe batteries, yeah, were yeah. going out. When, I, when I replaced them, then the shoe never came back on. The other shoe worked most of the night until my mascot would kneel down for kids. I could hear the LEDs crack and he would get up. I would like to know what I would need to do for the LED strip. I was thinking of cutting each LED out of the strips and use wire to connect them so they can move in the sleeve. Yeah, you could do that. Um, Wire. So let's talk about the Firewalker sneakers and how they fail, because they do. Um, but those look rad. So first of all, nice work. And what a cool thing. This is, if you want to go to the next slide too, this I is like a it. mascot for like a Relay for Life 
thing. So like raising money for cancer research is super is cool. cool. Not no better use for wearable electronics yeah. I can think of. Um, but we've had since the firewalker changes have been around for a little while. We all love wearing them. Everybody in the factory is like, yeah. are they in my size? Can I borrow them? Yeah. We've beaten these shoes um, to hell, and yeah. and we, we, we know the, how they fail. We had to do the video shoot. Um, I was the shoe person, and so we went down the street, and they just had me jump up and down for like an hour and like skateboard yeah, and like run intense. around and it bend the intense. shoes. So yeah. they do. They're they're very much geared towards a costume application and. Um, and like depending on what shoes you use, they will the LED strip will break at where the shoe bends. Um, some people have taken like a chunk out where the shoe bends and and put wires there so that there's no LED strip. Um, you could use like you sure you can break apart the LED strip and use wires, but you can also um, purchase like the sewable pixels or the breadboard pixels. Any of those will work fine for that. Um, as for why your other shoes stopped working and the LEDs went dim, you could have had a broken wire connection. So say if ground came disconnected because the wire like got pulled and um, came unsoldered or you know broke off, your LEDs might stay on for a minute because they have power and they sort of can find a little bit of ground through the data connection, but then they might have fried okay. um, if they were connected to power and not ground. Um, but that sounds like a loose connection to me as okay. to why they went out. But the, the durability of the strip is definitely a okay. thing. LED strip is not designed to be bent that way. so. Okay. Uh, I'm glad that you got as much life out of them as the you did. Of a loose connection is a strong connection. We have a strong connection to this book, Becky. I wrote this. I wrote this book with Tyler, so I. You have a very, you have a very strong connection to this book. It's, this is like also it's it's um it. based. On, <laughs> it's it's based on, well, and my hands are all in it. That's what um, yeah. my friend David was saying when he looked at it the other night. Was like. Oh, this is like a catalog of Becky hands. Yeah. Like, oh, look at that! Look at it. The hand is like shopping. The and like, I said, oh yeah, can you count how many colors of nail polish I own by by reading the oh, book? Yeah. Okay. Maybe that'll be. We don't do trivia question on my show, but if we did, it would be how many colors of nail polish do you think Becky owns? Be, Closest I, without going over wins. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, we're about to give away a book. If you would like to win a book on a future show, all you have to do is ask a question about wearable electronics. I will answer it, and then I'll put your name in the glowing hat, which okay. has to be on for good luck, right? Yeah. Okay. The winner is of the Flora book today. You're so lucky that your heart glows. So lucky. <laughs> Mike Meyer, you have oh, won. Cool. So for your um, it, your Flora book, my, I don't know if it will be, should be a little bit helpful for your, packet, your um, prank package because it'll teach yeah. you about some different conductive textiles and you might. Um, yeah. We're going to send you an empty box. It's our prank. <laughs> Oh, wow, it's here. Oh. Sounds like you already oh. have the audio FX oh, board, so yeah. you just needed the box, right? No, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that. No, we're going to send you a Getting Started you. with Adafruit Flora book by yeah. me and Tyler Cooper. Um, I will try to reach out to you on what looks to be YouTube, but if you would email support at adafruit.com, you can claim your prize that way. Yeah. All right, well, tonight, big show. Yeah, if you want to show off your own project, come back for the show and tell at 7.30 on Google+. Plus. You have to sign up beforehand in the announcement. to Say you want to show a project, you'll get invited to the circle, then you'll be invited tonight and every night, every every Wednesday night, show and tell, show off your own project with Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. And then after that at 8 o'clock is Ask an Engineer. Yep. You learn about all kinds of cool stuff, new products and that. And then tomorrow, as always, is the 3D printing show with yep. Noe and Pedro. 3D Thursday Hangout. Okay. So you can learn about, they're, they're showing some really cool stuff and they teach you some new CAD techniques and yeah. like it's, it's a, they have amazing stuff going on. It's a really great time. All right, well that's the show for today. Don't forget the code is Gemma. It'll be 10% off all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. So while you might not be able to check out with code Gemma on your Gemma, because they might be out of stock, which you can check out with code Gemma on your 3D printer. All right. Thanks for watching and um, we'll be back here next week. See you soon. Gold is best. Boom, boom. Gold is best. <laughs>